Hello beauties and welcome to the Bumpy Bones Lock Sport channel. Now in this video I'm going to talk about my approach to learning this wonderful art of lock picking. And um, I live in a rural area so we don't have a lock sporting community so um, a lot of the stuff that I've learned with it has been self-taught. Um, I actually got very interested in lock uh, picking by watching the lock picking lawyer. I highly recommend going out and watching his videos. But there are several other YouTubers out there that are really great lock pickers. You have the helpful lock picker, you got Sandman, you have Lady Locks, you've got a ton of other uh, great um, YouTubers out there um, that are great lock pickers. And I highly recommend going to their videos. They are probably more entertaining than mine. Uh, but I'm just doing this for the fun of it and just to share my experience and um, just to have fun. So when you, the way that I approached learning with, I actually went out and bought a, a very cheap lock picking set from Amazon. Uh, it came with this clear plastic lock and it actually came with um, some really cheap plastic um of course I can't get them right now because they're stuck in my case. Some cheap plastic um, lock picks as well. These are a good learning uh, set, but you know, there are better sets out there. Um, what's really nice with the clear uh, plastic locks is that you can see everything inside for the internal workings and the keyway is wide enough that you can pretty much get any pick in. Um, I do recommend getting the FNG set from Covert Instruments. It has a much better clear um, practice lock and it actually comes with um, a really good pick set. Uh, it's the short hook from the Genesis set. It comes with a good turning tool and actually comes with a great um, rake as well. Um, so I would recommend if you're looking for a starting kit, the Covert Instrument FNG is definitely the way to start. Um, but what you do also want to do is you do want to build your uh, pick collection. So, you know, I like Covert Instruments. Uh, their picks are good profile. I love the handles. You can also do Sparrow Lock picks. They actually have some really good, uh, these are the Monkey Paws. Um, but you have to kind of buy the bigger sets with them and they do have the Tuxedo set, which is a good starting set. It comes with a bunch of other picks. The other nice thing with the um, Sparrow picks is, and let me just grab them here, um, coming out with the sets and all that, they do actually come with the thermal handle, and so they are actually kind of nice to use, uh, hold and all that, so you can start with Sparrow uh, kit. I did their, I think it was their Wizzle um set was the first uh, uh, lock picking set that I got from them, lock picks that I got from them, and it was really good. Um, I also have their monkey paw sets, which are really nice. Um, so you want to get some good um, picks, especially if um, this is a hobby that you want to take seriously and all that. And again, there are so many other companies that make picks out there. Um, these are just the two companies that I've kind of really have fallen in love with. The other thing from Covert Instruments that I really like is their Covert Companion. In fact, I actually am just starting another one. Uh, this was their Sun Pickings and I actually got their um, uh, zero, uh, or their point zero two zero picks on this one, kind of keeping this as the slim fit uh, in some ways. Um, but what I really like about the Covert Instruments is the width of it, because with my hands, this width is kind of nice, but again, it's a different feel, so you gotta kind of, uh, choose a lock picking set that you're very comfortable with, and that's kind of the important thing. Um, turning tools, you get some great turning tools from Covert Instruments, um, but you can also make your own. And I'm probably going to make a video on the, on these um, at a later time, but I've actually started making my own turning tools. So I've got some bottom of the keyway, I got a top of the keyway, um, and there are several YouTube videos out there on how to make your own turning tools. But I'll probably do a video myself just because I did a combination of uh, different videos that I've seen with it. Um, and I've kind of settled on styles like this that I think really kind of match my techniques and all that. So. 
So let's actually start talking about the uh, locks here a bit. So once you get used to that clear uh, plastic lock, I actually recommend going and getting a cutaway lock. This is the American uh, Series 1100 from Culver Instruments. Um, and they did a really wonderful job with the cutaway here. You can see all the pins nicely. You can um, see the internal mechanisms. And so if I went to, you know, wanted to learn like the bypassing of these, you know, I can actually take my uh, bypass tool here and get that in there. And as I, oops, it helped if I locked it. And actually, as I turn it, you can actually see the mechanism in there turning. And so you can actually see everything that you're doing. And so what I recommend doing with these is you take your pick and you actually just insert it. You're not going to pick it right away. All you're doing initially is you're raising the individual pin. So you go to pin five, raise that, pin four, raise it, three, two, and one. And I just did that over and over and over again. And what that does is it gives you a good feeling on the depth of the pin because when you're doing lock picking with regular locks, you can't see the pin that you're on. So it's all on the feel, it's all on the sound, the uh, clicking, um, there's, you know, the tactile part of it. That's what tells you where you are in the pit, in, in the lock. Um, and so once you get used to that, then you can actually start practicing um, the, the picking on these. Now, what I did with the American lock here was I actually replaced all the uh, security pins with just regular pins. That way I didn't have to worry about any of the serrations or the spools or anything like that. And so it gave me the feel on the ability to feel and get that click and kind of learn that standard um, pen and all that. And that sets you up really well for the beginning master locks here. Uh, so these are the master lock series one, three, and five. These are all great starting locks. These are four pin locks with standard uh, security pins. And standard security pins, this is just a regular pin, but are just smooth like that. And so you don't have to worry about extra clicks or false sets or anything like that. You can actually, uh, uh, it's just a standard straightforward pick. And so what I recommend with master lock and the way I approach master lock is I always use bottom of the keyway tension. Um, but you can't always use bottom of the keyway tension because what that does is it does restrict the amount of room that you have for your pick and all that. So if I go to my Brinks lock here and I go bottom of the keyway tension here, I don't have enough room to get my pick in there, especially to get to the back um, pins and all that. So I have to use top of the keyway tension here. Um, but if we go back to our master lock here, I'm going to go with bottom of the keyway tension. And I'm going to go through and just pick this guy real quick. And you can see that it was pretty straightforward with this one. Now, when you are practicing um, or when you are uh, picking locks and doing this for fun and all that, never use locks that are in use always use locks that you have that are designated for practice for lock picking and nothing else. The reason being is, uh, especially when you're dealing with locks that you can't repin or get the cylinder out easily. Um, when I pick this lock, you just saw, I'll do it again. What I'm going to do with this guy is I'm just going to go, I'm not even going to hit pin four. I'm just going to go to pin three. Pin two, and it's open. I didn't even have to touch one or four. And so the risk that you run with that is uh, one and four are zero pins, or actually one is a one pin, four is a zero pin. Those are actually under the shear line, or, or because the pins are so small, when I'm talking about the pin numbers, what I'm talking about is the size of the key pin here. And so zeros and ones are like probably 
or smaller, smaller than this. And what that does is it keeps the driver pin that rests on top of this below the shear line. Um, and then there's a spring uh, above that. And so what happens is if you don't raise that um, pin, um, the when you t turn the cylinder, that spring can actually catch and that can cause a big problem because if that spring catches it will shear and it will break the lock it will damage the lock and all of that um and so i actually uh <laughs> already ruined like two of these um already in one of these um because of that um um zero pin and all of that so never pick locks that are in use unless you absolutely have to um, so once you get used to these guys, then you can kind of upgrade to some of these other ones here. Now I'm going to put this guy over here right now just because this is similar to these, but I want to talk about that one a little bit different, a little differently. So this is a, I think it's a, no, this is another four pin lock. So this is very similar to the number five. It's a fairly straightforward pick. So this would be a great one to do after you get used to these guys. The tolerance on it's on fine, a little bit different. But then you have um, some of the higher end master locks. And these guys have security pins in them typically. In the 930, there are some that do have spool pins in it. But I've also encountered some that don't have security pins, just regular pins. So it's a hit or miss. Um, but these are other great locks to then upgrade to and progress to. Um, so this is the 575. This has spool pins in it. This is the 1921 limited edition series. I think it's the same thing as the 911, uh, but it has spool pins in it. Uh, both of these are four pins. Then you have a five pin 930 uh, that if it does come with security pins, comes with spool pins. So, you know, these are good ones to work with. And what's nice about the last two is you can actually pull out the, remove the cylinder and repin it. Now, one reason why I kind of save this guy as last is because if you are limited in funds and are looking for a good practice lock to start with, the 530, the M530 that you can get from Home Depot is actually a really good one to start with because you can actually remove the cylinder with it and it's a by default a four pin with standard security pin so it's the same as the master lock one three and five series you do have to do a little bit of work in order to get this so you can repin it you can buy a repinning kit off of amazon for master lock and american locks that comes with a bunch of um uh, key pins and driver pins and security pins um but when you remove the core on this guy, um, and I thought I had one set off to the side here. Um, oops, it's right here. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and try to pick this guy open because I thought I had this all prepped, and I didn't. Um, where is my... Here we go. All right. So let's give this a try. Actually, you know what? I'm going to try this guy. I've got, I'm sorry to do my own security pins because uh, I am working on making a challenge lock. I'm actually turning one of these into a challenge lock. Uh, both of these have custom security pins that I've made. So picking them can be a bit fun. And what I have discovered is when I'm doing this on camera, doesn't always work. So here we go. I got this guy open. All right. So. I'm going to grab my screwdriver here. We're going to move the... That's a Phillips head in there. There we go. Be a little fancy with that. Alright. So... One thing that um, is different with these cores than like one of the ones you would get out of the, the 930s or the 921 is that rather than using a E or C uh, um, clip to hold the cylinder in place, 
they crimp the uh, edges of the uh, outer body together and you're to hold it in. So what you actually have to do is on one side uh, grind away the uh, crimp and plus a little extra. And if you do it just like that, what will happen is when you uh, turn the key clockwise, counterclockwise, you can then remove the core easily. And when you have it in the lock, because you turn clockwise to unlock it, it stays, uh, uh, it, it doesn't come loose uh, because you do have the, the crimp here. Uh, and so there's not enough space for the uh, cylinder to come out. Uh, and so it still stays usable, but makes it so that you can actually replace the pins, the, the security pins on that. So um, it's a good lock to get that you can, if you don't want to buy a bunch of different locks, but you want that ability to, once you get used to the uh, key that is with it, you can actually pull it apart and repin it and redo your and do security pins and make yourself a challenge. Um, in a later video, I'm actually going to uh, walk through the steps of making this here into a challenge lock. So I will do a video on uh, making your own security pins and then uh, other things that you can do to these to make it a more challenge of a uh, pick. All right. And so once you get through all of the other, like the standard master locks here, then you can kind of start to upgrade and go to other uh, styles. So you've got like the master lock 140, 141, 150. These are all solid body locks. Um, and so they are very different in terms of picking and the feeling of them. They've got security pins and they are a bit different. So those are definitely a good progression. Um, but one thing that you all will find with these is that you can actually bypass them fairly easily. And so this is why I don't trust Microsoft. No, not Microsoft. Sorry, Microsoft. Didn't mean to solely your name. Uh, <laughs> but um, this is why I don't trust Master Lock is because you can go through and with like combs and other things bypass um, all the different locks and all those locks and all that so um and then once you kind of get used to the master locks you can then start branching out into other brands and all that so this is brinks i got this from wally world or walmart and um this is the one that you actually have to do top of the keyway tension with and so i'm gonna grab my top of the keyway tension bar that i've made and let me losing track of my picks uh, so I'll pick this guy open because this is top of the keyway, so it's a little different. Again, because I'm recording. All right, let's reset. There we go. So got that one open. Uh, this is another thing that you'll encounter sometimes is you'll get locks that when you pick open, you can't always, um, actually see, I was able to <laughs> uh, lock that in by going that way. That's actually the first time I've run into that. So you can run into some issues by um, picking locks that, and, Especially on like walkout pads, like this is technically a walkout pad. Um, you need to have that rotated in order to relock the key or relock the pad. So, and so once you kind of get used to kind of like the going through some of the standard ones, you can go with like the American Lock series here. 
Uh, these are a good if you're looking for an uh, intermediate challenge. American Lock is a good one. This is the 1100 series, which is kind of the staple green belt if you're looking at the lock picking. Um, um, no, no, you, lock pickers united belt system. Um, you got the 5200. Interesting fact about this guy, though, is this guy's a bit easier to pick than this guy. This guy had standard pins plus one anti-bump pin, while this guy had uh, a mixture of serrated and serrated spool pins in it, which makes it harder to pick. Um, but I like, and this is kind of a cool lock. I'm actually probably going to make this into a challenge lock as well. Uh, so I'll do a video around that when I hit that. And so as I'm progressing with um, kind of the locks, and that's currently where I'm at with my level, the next locks I'm now going to be looking at is this Master Lock uh, 6271D series. Um, this is the six pin uh, Master Lock, and the keyway is a little bit thinner. It's a different keyway than I'm used to. I have to do top of the keyway with this guy, so I'm I'm having difficulty learning it, and I'm getting it, but you know it would take me a little bit to do that. And then I'm also starting to see in the Abus series uh, locks, which is a different keyway. Um, again, top of the keyway, I got to kind of figure out the the pattern, the spacing, and the feel of this guy. So these are the ones that I'm working on next. Um, and then after I kind of get those down and all that, I'm also starting to learn kind of like the doorway keyways. So this is like the quick set, the shilleg. Um, and so, you know, I went to Home Depot, bought, bought a couple of, um, of the deadbolts that I have in uh, practice um, holders. I just got this guy in the mail today with a practice uh, stand, so I really love it. Probably order another one. And I made this one myself. Um, I drilled the hole on the wrong side of it so it sticks out a little bit. But hey, it's okay. Uh, I'm just doing it for practice. Um, but you can also get practice locks from um, like Sparrow's Lock Picking. So um, you can get a set like this is their progressive set. So uh, out of box, it comes with uh, four of these. One has only two pens, and you have three, four, and five pen ones. So you actually get four of these, which are cool. Um, and so these are good uh, locks you start with. It does come with the shilleg keyways um, by default out of the box, but you can get a core kit and actually change the uh, keyway. So this is the Yale keyway that I've got on number two here. So this way I can start um, playing with those. And But my approach with that is going to be the same, is I've got some cutaway locks here. Um, and so this is one of the Sparrow cutaway locks. I actually polished this up myself. Um, just want to see, you know, how, the effort that it would take for polishing and all that. Um, and you can see the pins on this. The only thing I don't like about the Sparrow's cutaway locks is there is a six um, pin hole here for uh, if you wanted to pin this with a, um, six pins. Um, so you can't see all the pin holes with it. Um, but what you can do is there is a cutaway lock from Dangerfield. Uh, this is the Euro cinder, uh, cylinder profile, but it's a chalet keyway, and you can see um, all the way down to the key pins with this guy. I really like it. Uh, so this is going to be, you know, what I'm going to be using to learn, you know, where the uh, pins are and kind of how to raise them uh, especially when I get to like the pins five and four because you know right now I can't raise five I can kind of get four uh, so I gotta go through and kind of learn you know the best way of maneuvering the pick in that keyway and that's what these cutaways are so good for um, but you can get the cutaways from different sources. I mean, this is a cutaway I got off of Etsy. Here's a different style cutaway that I got off of Amazon. 
Um, so you can get a bunch of different lots and a bunch of different sources. Um, Culver Instruments has a good practice lock as well. This is a Schleg Mortison lock. But what they did with this is they actually drilled out the pin uh, holes and so and capped them uh, with, with a, a hex screw cap. And so you can actually uh, uh, unscrew that cap uh, and replace the driver pin and the key pin without having to disassemble the entire lock. So, you know, I would recommend if you're going to start with the doorway key weights to definitely pick up a couple of locks like this, just so that it's easier to repin and all that. And you can get a repinning kit from Amazon. They do have a nice Schlage and quick set um, a repinning kit that's fairly inexpensive, but it comes with all the pin numbers, the key numbers, and also a collection of different security pins as well. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope everyone enjoyed it. Uh, feel free to like the video if you liked it. Feel free to post a comment. And everyone have a beautiful day.